Hey, I'm here with Soren Skoo, the CEO of Muller Maersk, and talking about the drilling unit first off. Um, you've announced the spinoff. How is this going to work? It's going to be a demerger, and the Muller uh, holding will still have a, a, a giant chunk of the shares. Yes, it's our plan to, to demerge the company, and by that we mean uh, list the company. We're not planning to raise any capital, so we will distribute all of the shares to our existing shareholders. So they'll own that company in the same ratio that they own AP Warner Bros. today. My first question is why? Um, uh, why not sell it? There's uh, This business is doing well. Oil prices don't look toppy. Private equity has $1.7 trillion of capital that we always hear about. You know, Why not sell it rather than, than demerge it? Well, we have spent uh, almost two years working on finding uh, solutions for our oil and oil-related businesses. We, we found a solution for Maersk Oil and another one for, for Maersk Tankers. Uh, we've, we've looked at all options also for, for mass drilling. We've been believe this is the, the option that will create the most value for our shareholders. Reality is that there are many great companies in the drilling sector, but there are not a lot of people, uh, companies with very strong uh, balance sheets. So all the other possible transactions involve some kind of merger, which effectively, since we are well capitalized, would mean that, uh, that we would probably end up having more exposure to the drilling sector rather than less. So, so we actually think this is a good, uh, good solution, and uh, it will allow our, our shareholders, hopefully, to, to remain invested in, in a company that is well capitalized and will, uh, will do well in the coming years in the drilling sector. And of course, it allows you to stay focused on the shipping business as the whole point. Um, what does this mean for, for the, the drilling unit? There's 4,000 employees. Employees. Um, they're very closely tied culturally, obviously, um, still to you. Um, how's the outlook for drilling? Uh, I think uh, our uh, uh, colleagues in mass drilling will take some comfort from the fact that th they will still have the main, same main shareholder as they have today. AP Muller Holding is, uh, will, at least at the outset, uh, own uh, more than 40% of the company, and they've also made uh, uh, commitments to continue as, as a major shareholder in that company. So, so they, will, uh, they will remain uh, part of uh, the Maersk family, if you will. How does it affect the shipping business because, or, or, or now your core business? Because they did generate a lot of profit as well drilling, so that will fall away with the demerger. I think from a balance sheet uh, perspective, this uh, transaction will be more or less uh, uh, debt uh, neutral or neutral for our balance sheet. So, so I think what is most important for our uh, container shipping ports and logistics business is really that we get even more of our time uh, in the day to focus on, on, on driving the transformation of, uh, of that. We are, we are in the process of integrating uh, our, our business units. We are have, we're in the middle of integrating Hamburg Süd. We are in a in an industry that is uh, severely challenged by, by, by lower freight rates and, and lots of uh, geopolitical race, risk and, and trade tension. So, so, so for us, it's really a matter of, of being able to focus 100% on, on the future of the company. Let's get to that, uh, the freight rate, uh, rate, freight rates and trade tensions. Um, you put out a, essentially a profit warning a couple of weeks ago, and it's one of the few times I can remember seeing the market bid up shares in a company that warns on profit, I think 7% on the day. Why do you think that w that happened? Well, first of all, we, we put out a, a profit warning, but we also disclosed the key numbers uh, for for the second quarter. Uh, and, and in the second quarter, we were able to, to, to deliver numbers that were significantly above uh, uh, consensus. And probably most importantly, we were able to demonstrate in that quarter that, that we have regained uh, control of our, our of our unit cost. We had a, had a very poor first quarter uh, when it comes to managing our cost. It was very much impacted by the fact that uh, we took over Hamburg Süd in December of last year. We got added a lot of new capacity that came in uh, during the first quarter uh, from Hamburg Süd, and we were not able to to, to rationalize that quite as fast as, as we would have liked. So uh, in the second quarter, we regained uh, control of our unit cost. I think that's very important for, uh, for, 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 for investors. So at the same time as you're trying to integrate this big purchase, um, you've got to deal with these flare-ups in global trade. How how volatile does that make your business? Well, right now, uh, the reality is, or if we look at the second quarter, container shipping market grew around 4%. We grew 4.3%. Uh, so, so on the ground, it's not like we can see uh, any impact on the, on the volumes uh, as, as, as we speak. Also, the start to this third quarter from a volume perspective in global trade has been, been quite good. And in fact, it's probably, you know, 
we see excess growth in, in the U.S. right now as, as importers probably are trying to import uh, maybe slightly earlier than, earlier than what they would otherwise have done. So, so no impact on volumes yet, but for a business that whose, whose main uh, residential is to facilitate global trade, all this talk about the uh, trade war and trade barriers and higher import tariffs, of course, cannot be seen as, as good news. Yeah, let's try and get into that in a little bit more detail. Um, we have the China-U.S. tariffs kind of just now going into effect, so it's understandable you wouldn't have seen the effect in the last quarter. You've got uh, U.S.-European uh, tariffs going into effect. You've got a doubling of Turkey steel tariffs. What does the beginning of the third quarter look like to you? So, so, so for container volumes, uh, pretty much no no impact. Uh, the, the tariffs on, on steel and alu- aluminum is, are not really uh, uh, impacting us at all. So, I mean, what's important for us is really what happens to consumer goods. And, and there we haven't seen uh, uh, anything but threats at this, uh, at, at, at this point. It's really hard to judge what the eventual uh, impact will be because global supply chains are truly fragmented and complicated. And, and of course, there will be substitution effects. So if tariffs go up f- from one country, uh, I think the importer's first uh, action will probably be try to source this product from another uh, origin. Uh, and of course, parts of the tariff increases can also be passed on to, to consumers. Other people uh, we have seen uh, speculate on impact on global trade are in the you know, 0.1 to 0.3 percentage points of impact uh, in, the, in the next two three, four months, so, so relatively, I would say, quite, uh, quite limited impact. But, but if the situation escalates and if we get to 200 or $500 billion worth of goods that, have, uh, you know, that are impacted uh, between China and the U.S., of course, it will have uh, impact our business. So how, do, um, how stable are freight rates then? I mean, one of the things that your investors um, took solace in on August 7th was your reassurance that freight rates had come back and, and were stabilizing. Is it difficult to get visibility out you know, into the third quarter and past with the, this trade war on the horizon? Well, we are uh, kind of uh, uh, halfway through the, the third quarter by now, so we have actually quite good visibility on the third quarter. Freight rates have, uh, you know, were reasonable at the beginning of the year. They kind of dropped off a cliff in, in, in March uh, and, and, and dropped, uh, bottomed out in April and then actually have gone up by 30% since then. And, and what, you, what, what you see right now is that the, 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 the freight rate levels are, uh, you know, relatively high uh, for for the year, uh, and and they, we clearly believe that they will remain so during the third quarter. This this quarter is traditionally the high season for our industry because it's a Christmas trade that that moves out of Asia and into Europe and the U.S. Uh, and uh, as far as we can see, volumes are, are good; they're strong, uh, and 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 freight rates are, are holding. 